Welcome, everybody. I'm Liz McDonald filling in for Judge Napolitano. Tonight, can Congressman Ron Paul, the front runner, withstand the attacks? Newt Gingrich has already attacked the congressman without naming him, suggesting that Ron Paul does not understand how dangerous the world is. But Congresswoman Michelle Bachman was far more direct in her own attack. Take a listen to this. Ron Paul would make a very dangerous president. Ron Paul would wait until the United States had a city that was taken out by a nuclear weapon. All right, our first guest believes Congressman Ron Paul's foreign policy positions are misunderstood and misrepresented by the media. He's Doug Weed. He's presidential historian and senior advisor to the Ron Paul campaign. So, sir, how has he been misrepresented in the media? Uh, well, <laughs> that clip you just ran <laughs> is a good example. Uh, uh, Ron Paul is in favor of the Constitution. He's not against war. If, uh, if there's a crisis, you don't let some hysterical congresswoman from Minnesota decide when we go to war and where we go to war. You take it to the U.S. Cong Congress. There's nothing extreme about that. There's nothing dangerous about the U.S. Congress but, you know, sir, or the but American he's, Constitution. I hear what you're saying. What you're you saying bring is, it there, you declare right, the war, you get in, you fight it, you get out. Hang on one second. But, but uh, Ron Paul has also said terrorists attacked the United States uh, because we've been in the Middle East, because of, uh, you know, he said also 9-11 would bring glee in the Bush administration as a pretext to invading Iraq. Take a listen to this quote that we've got from somebody who's not in the GOP party. Uh, rather, it is. It's from Mr. Wolfowitz. He said, we can now remove almost all of our forces from Saudi Arabia. Their presence there over the last 12 years has been a source of enormous difficulty for a friendly government. It's been a huge recruiting device for al-Qaeda. In fact, if you look at bin Laden, one of his principal grievances was the presence of so-called crusader forces on the Holy Land, Mecca and Medina. What do you make of that quote? Well, uh, <laughs> a lot of people agree with that. And, and uh, in 1953, Ron Paul points out, we went into the Middle East and we threw out uh, a democratically elected prime minister of Iran. And we come back 60 years later and we, we come with war and we say, well, we need a democracy in the Middle East. Well, <laughs> what, what are the people supposed to think? But remember, Ron Paul voted to go after Osama bin Laden. And Ron Paul was the only public figure who defended Israel when she took out those nuclear reactors in Iraq. He's not against force and he's not against war. He's in favor of the American Constitution and allowing Congress to deliberate when we should go to war because there's unintended consequences to these wars. We need to think them through before we fire the gun. All right, so we've got a 27-year-old now running North Korea, a nuclear-armed state. We've got the Middle East, especially Egypt, still unraveling. We've got, you know, the continued rise of Iran. How would Iran, Paul, presidency handle, number one, what's going on in North Korea, and then number two, the Middle East? Well, Ron Paul believes, first of all, that we should... Uh, that we should defend our own country. A lot of troops, like troops in Japan and Germany, World War II ended 60 years ago, and those troops could come home. Uh, he believes that America is so economically vulnerable right now that it's impacting our national security. So he'd like to see us turn the economy around and not these endless wars, wars without end. I mean, there, there are candidates for president who think we should invade Somalia because al-Qaeda is there, or, or Nigeria. You look at Egypt, and you mentioned Egypt, and that's a good example of un unintended consequences that Dr. Paul talks about. There are 13 million Christians in Egypt, including the large Coptic Christian community, that could be slaughtered now with a change of government there, with the Muslim Brotherhood taking over with Sharia law. And you look back on the war in Iraq, uh, after we We've left Iraq now. Uh, the Christian community's been wiped out. A church a thousand years old in Mosul has you know, been sir, bombed but you and destroyed. Were, you used to work for, I'm sorry, hang on. You used, to work, for, hang on. You used to work for George W. Bush. That's interesting comments that you make now about you know, the Iraq yeah. war. What do you, how do you square that? Well, I, I'll tell you what, I, I, have, I have worked in seven presidential campaigns. I've co-authored books with presidents. I've interviewed six or seven of the presidents and first ladies and 19 of their children. And I served in the White House for one president, an advisor to two presidents. And I have never served anyone <laughs> more incorruptible than Ron Paul. I sleep better at night because he's a principled person who believes in the Constitution. 
And that offends sometimes some groups, this group or the other group, but it's a wonderful okay. document and there's nothing extreme, there's nothing okay. dangerous, there's nothing wrong with the U.S. Constitution. Okay. It'll work just fine. All right. And uh, how do I square it? Well, I've, <laughs> I've changed my mind about a few things. Okay, Doug Weed with the Ron Paul campaign. So good to be with you tonight, sir. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Next up, Liz.